Welcome to Girls STEM Academy. Be sure to check out our website, girlsstemacademy.org, and listen to our podcasts available on all major streaming sites. In today's video, we will be covering polynomial division, an important mathematical tool when dealing with polynomials. All right, so let's get started with our first example. The first and most main method of polynomial division is using polynomial long division. So let's get right into it. First, we start off by looking at the first term right here and the first term right here. So how many times does 9x go into 36x cubed? That would be 4x squared. Then, just like regular division, you multiply the 4x squared with the 9x plus 2, and you multiply it with each of those terms. So then we get 36x cubed plus 8x squared. Then we subtract. And over here, we get 54x squared. And then we want to drop down the 21x. So now we do the same thing. How many times does 9x go into 54x squared? The answer to that is 6x. So we write that up here. And now we multiply the 6x which, with each term in the 9x plus 2. And that gives us 54x squared plus 12x. Then we subtract. We get 9x. And then we drop down the 2. And how many times does... 9x go into 9x, that's just 1. And when we multiply that 1 by each term, we get 9x plus 2. And that leaves us with a remainder of 0. So our final answer is 4x squared plus 6x plus 1. Well, let's go on to our next example. We're going to do the same thing. But notice here that it goes from 5x to the 4th to 8x squared. There's no x cubed term. But regardless, it's important that we write that in when we're doing polynomial division. So the coefficient would just be 0, and we'd write 0x cubed. All right, now we can continue on. So just like we did before, we're going to see how many times does x go into 5x to the 4th. Well, just 5x cubed, and then we're going to multiply each term of x minus 2 by 5x cubed to get 5x to the 4th minus 10x cubed. Then we subtract, and that gives us 10x cubed plus 8x squared when we drop it down. And now again, we see how many times does x go into 10x cubed? That's 10x squared, and we distribute that, and we get 10x cubed minus 20x squared. And then we subtract and get 28x squared, and we drop down the 3x. Now we're going to do that again, and x goes into 28x squared 28x times. And then we distribute and subtract and then we drop down the one. And for the final time, that just goes in 59 times, and we distribute so our answer is 5x cubed plus 10x squared plus 28x plus 59 
with a remainder of 119. But when we're doing polynomial division, usually we write the remainders a little bit differently. We would write plus 119 over whatever is here, whatever we're dividing by, and that's x minus 2. And this would be our final answer. All right, but you're probably thinking this is a lot of work. It's very, very long, even when what we're dividing by, the x minus 2, seems relatively small. There's got to be an easier way to do this, right? Definitely. So let's redo this exact same problem, but with a different way called synthetic division. So what we have to keep in mind is synthetic division only works when the coefficient of what we're dividing by is 1. So we can only have x minus 2. It wouldn't work for, say, 4x minus 2. We couldn't do it this way. So let's get started. First, we take what is the root of this equation right here? x minus 2, the root is just 2, if we set it equal to 0. So we're going to box that off to the side. Now we write in the coefficients. So notice the coefficients here. 5, 8, 3, 1. But remember, there is a 0 that we can't see because that's for the x cubed term. So we just write each of the coefficients just like that. All right, so the first step, we just drop down the first coefficient, and that's a 5. Then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the 5 by whatever number is up here, which is 2, and that gives us 10. Then we add the 0 and 10 to get 10. Then now we multiply the 10 by this 2. That gives us 20. Now we add the 20 and the 8 to get 28. And multiply 28 by 2, which gives us 56. Now we add the 56 and the 3, which gives us 59. Then we multiply 59 times 2, that's 118, and then finally we do 118 plus 1, and that gives us 119. So now all we have to do is add in the terms. So now we're left with the coefficients 5, 10, 28, 59, and 119. And now we just have to write in 5x cubed plus 10x squared plus 28x plus 59 plus 119 over x minus 2. So as you can see, that was a much simpler way of doing the exact same problem. And if we look back, we can notice that you can see some similarities between them too. Right here with the 59, the 119, the 28, and the 10 are all showing up right here. So let's do that one more time just so we make sure we get it. So find the root of this right here, and that's just negative 1. So we write that off in a box to the side. Then we identify our coefficients. And a common mistake is to ignore the terms that aren't there. But in this case, x to the fourth and x squared are not there. But we have to write in a zero or else our method will not work. Alright, so we just, first we drop down the 6, 
then we do 6 times negative 1, and that's a negative 6. We add 0 and negative 6, and we get negative 6. Then we do negative 6 times negative 1, that gives us 6. Now we add 7 and 6, and we get 13. Now we do 13 times negative 1, that gives us negative 13. 0 plus negative 13 is just negative 13. Negative 13 times negative 1 is 13. And we add 2 and 13 and we get 15. 15 times negative 1 is negative 15. And we add negative 15 and 9 to get negative 6. So now we have our coefficients. We can write those in first. And now all we have to do is fill in our terms, and the terms will always be one less than the original coefficient here. So it would just be 6x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 13x squared minus 13x plus 15 minus 6 over x plus 1. And that is our final answer. Thank you for watching. Be sure to support us and check out our website at girlsstemacademy.org. Hope this video helped. See you next time.